Welcome to Cardboard Conjecture. We're a podcast about board games where we have opinions and conclusions formed on the basis of incomplete information. This episode of Cardboard Conjecture is brought to you by these great Saskatoon businesses. Amazing Stories Comics on 8th Street. Dragon's Den Games on 8th Street. MrDiceGuy.com and Breakout Escape Rooms on Faithful Avenue. Welcome to Cardboard Conjecture. I'm your host, Norm. I'm Ryan. I'm Ian. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about what we've been playing, thinking, and doing about board games. And uh, Ryan, why don't you tell us the uh, topic we're going to hit on this episode? Uh, We're going to be talking about some of our favorite, maybe not so favorite, uh, but people that we that have inspired us to do what we are doing right now, but we're talking about our content creators that have influenced us. Cardboard Conjecture is proudly sponsored by Amazing Stories Comics on 8th Street in Saskatoon. They are the winner of the Joe Schuster Award for Best Comic Book Store in Canada, and they were also nominated in 2016 for the U.S. Eisner Spirit of Comics Retailer Award presented at Comic-Con. Amazing Stories, amazing collection of comic books, board games, puzzles, and collectibles can be found in their store or on their new online website. Welcome back to Cardboard Conjecture. We're going to go straight into playing, thinking, and doing board games. Uh, Ryan, tell us what you've been, uh, you've, you've got like a uh, juicy, juicy thing to well, talk about. I'm just, I'm just going to be just, just, just kind of like rapid froth. fire them because <laughs> oh, full, I went Start full the froth. froth now. Yeah, yeah. I went full froth because a, a lot of people may know or may not know that uh, I really, really enjoy um, Fantasy Flight Games and what they what they produce i think out of my top 10 games that i uh, of all time i think four of them are fantasy flight games and so and the fact yeah. that you're a board game junkie yeah yeah they yeah, <laughs> they, they, they they got right into my veins um so what i've been thinking about since they did their release um they just had gen con online and fantasy flight is very famous at the very beginning of gen con that they do their in-flight report and this was no different this year. They delivered their in-flight report. Um, they tried to do it via their, their Twitch channel, <laughs> except for they had massive um, like, uh, technical difficulties. And so the, the, the site kept crashing. Oh, yeah. And so what they had to do is that they actually just had to remotely film themselves talking about the stuff. And then they just pushed it to their YouTube channel. And so from that in-flight report, there's lots of really good lots of real goodies that are out there like i got really excited for the new twilight imperium 4 expansion um what they did here with this expansion is they they had to have crammed like well like five or six expansion worth of material into like one box like they had a they're giving us more ships more plastic figurines to go on there they're giving us mechs you can deploy a mech to a planet um <laughs> more more factions you're gonna give your factions can recruit recruit leaders there's going to be more system tiles there's going to be more objective cards there's going to be oh so and much it only this. adds seven hours to the game i heard That's not bad. <laughs> well, well yeah pretty much like two new play oh you can play you can play up to eight players which i don't know if i want to yeah because ti4 I mean, needs I'm, more stuff what's the max now is it six six so add on another two players you're probably looking at yeah now you're looking at like eight hours <laughs> an hour per player oh that's so, a weekend retreat man but the price point on this thing a hundred bucks for this expansion but they're they're, they're giving you a hundred dollars worth of material i i, I have to believe because the the box looks like it's about as big as the base game box <laughs> cool so so twilight imperium 4 expansion they announced a bunch of new marvel champions which i'm all about marvel champions they introduced some new introduced some new heroes they introduced another campaign box uh they introduced some new lord of the rings journeys in middle earth they introduced a new campaign that's going to be releasing and a new this figure list pack is going to put you in a coma man uh, my my wallet's been hurting since the, <laughs> since they released it um they're introducing a new dice based x-men game called x-men mutant insurrection which i when I started looking at it, 
kind of looks like it's like an X-Men theme on that dice game called Elder Sign. You remember, uh, if you know what Elder mm-hmm. Sign is. Yeah. It's a, one of their games. It's a dice-based, Cthulhu-based game. But this Use one that looks Yahtzee like mechanism. So this one kind of looks like it's going to be kind of like an X-Men implementation of that. I'm kind of intrigued. It looks, it looks pretty kind of cool. And of course, they, they announced all the other stuff like Arkham Horror 3rd Edition expansions and uh, Legend of the Five Rings expansions and, X, and X-Wing and Armada and Legion. And they did all that kind of stuff they announced. But the real cool part was at the very end of the video, they teased the new Descent game. <laughs> which look look amazing they didn't talk about descent at all during gen con the gen con weekend they just teased of the, this guy holding out okay they he held, he was holding like a massive cube of a box with like this diablo like like you remember the old video game diablo like artwork on the front and it just says descent right and everybody was talking about it. everybody got froth <laughs> give, give, give me give me more descent <laughs> which i don't know if i need descent because i got star wars imperial assault but uh, it, it looked really, really cool. We all, Ian, we know the answer to that statement. <laughs> <laughs> I assume the one you're most excited about is the T, the TI expansion, right? Yeah, I, I'm intrigued by all the stuff that they are throwing in. They're throwing into it. Um, just the new ship models, the new, the new factions, leaders. Like, you can, like your faction will have like a leader with a new another special ability that they can have. Yeah, I don't know. I might have to. I might have to fork over some dollars for that one. <laughs> Ian, tell us what you've been uh, playing, thinking, doing. Um, I've been getting quite a few games to the table. I've been playing a lot of Wingspan lately, and some Stone Age, some classics, um, and got Dominant Species to the table. Oh, I love that Cause, game. Because this is a tough one. Because it's a longer game. Yeah, there's quite a bit going on. So it's not like you kind of got to pick who you're playing with right uh but yeah we got we decided you know what one afternoon a few of us were just kind of hanging around we're like why don't we play a longer game and and see how that goes and so we played dominant species how at uh, what uh, player count three cool yeah three. that's a, that's a, i like that player count yeah i think three and four i think a four is good but then you're really starting to push time limits right like i think five oh. and six it's just gonna go too long yeah yeah but no, it was it was a good game. I I got decimated, like just crushed. Uh, who were you? Uh, who was I? I was the was I the spiders? No, I was the reptiles. The reptiles. That's not bad. The reptiles are okay because you. Um, the cool thing about dominant species is you've got to worry about what elements in the environment you can adapt to, right? And that's kind mm-hmm. of a big thing. And there's things that can happen in the game where you'll lose those and the reptiles, it's harder for them to lose. The problem is, is that situations never actually came up where my, my power became an advantage. And so it was kind of wasted and the spiders crushed me. Well, and as I mean, as far as worker placement games go, that's to me, that's always a worker placement game that gets overlooked because everybody sees it more as a take that game. Oh, definitely. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's like, man, this is a worker placement. Rest, run the recipe every time. Like, go to the – like, string commands, right? It's like, go to the top. What's the first thing we do? What's the next thing, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, every, the people that get all, you know, want to flip the table, um, I just look at them and go, you can see. You can see it's going to happen. <laughs> but you made the choice, a, a different choice, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, what were the other two? Uh, the mammals were in there because they were really controlling the ice fields as the, as the, as the ice spread out. (laughs) So they got a lot of points from that. And I, I keep forgetting how many points that is, if you can control the tundras. Um, And so they got a lot of points and the, I'm pretty sure it was the spiders were the ones who won and they won quite handedly. Did they uh, take advantage of their attacking and their, their aggressive nature? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. For sure. yeah that's a great game it's hard it's we don't play it very often maybe a couple times a year but but i really enjoy it yeah that's one of my tops ryan i don't know if you've this is a gmt thing and you're not a big gm tier but this has always been one that i i 
I am always drawn to it. I just, I, I just need to play it. I've, I've always, I've always been drawn to this game. Well, I like, like, I like euros. I like heavy euros, but I really appreciate when it fits the theme really well. And that's, and dominant species is one of those ones that really fits the theme because it's all about the survival of the fittest. And it's very <laughs> much about that. Like you have to think about how you're going to survive in the environments that you're in. And you have to think about the other people because they're, they're not going to just let you live there. They're going to come in and try to kick you out and do anything they can to take over your spot. It is a very interactive game. That's uh, <laughs> for sure. That was a polite way of saying that a you know baseball bat fight is yeah. pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I had, uh, of course. I mean, I'm in a household that is. There's. I'm the only kind of hardcore gamer in the house. So I like to play a lot of solo games. Uh, and uh, this time, I had a chance a couple times to do some. And again, I it didn't go well. I love this game because it's not easy and it is Black Orchestra uh, 2016 uh, designed by Philip Dubarre um, uh, and it's like one to five players. Uh, it is basically um, uh, what Ian, you're the movie guy. What's that uh, Tom Cruise uh, Valkyrie movie? What's Valkyrie. It? It's called Valkyrie. Yeah. Is it is it called Valkyrie? I thought it was like yeah. the, the Curse of Sun. Okay, so yeah, it's basically that movie, and you are um, uh, part of that whole uh, a periphery group around Hitler um, throughout his rise to power, his uh, attenuation of power and his, uh, his decline from that power. And throughout all of these phases, you and the cohorts, um, uh, um, in, like I said, in the periphery of his, of his influence are trying to, um, cooperatively assassinate him through all of these different means, um, all of these different, uh, uh, uh venues, all of these different events, um, ways. Uh, it's basically um, one of my favorite cooperative games because of my, the favorite thing I like about it is um, anytime that you can have um, like an infiltrator in a cooperative game uh, or hidden information in a cooperative game, uh, it just makes it so much uh, uh, deeper and more, um, tactical and strategic because all of a sudden there's that variable of, of the unknown and where this comes into play is if during this whole process of you trying to coordinate with the others to assassinate Hitler um, that you get picked up by the Gestapo and brought to uh, interrogation right. um, you have to start pulling these cards where depending on uh, on the outcomes of certain things events um, you either come out as a double agent or you come out clean or you come out completely ruined and it takes you that much more to build your character's morale up and build your character's uh, um, strategic levels up and card hand up. Um, I, it's just, I mean, talking about dominant species and its uh, collaboration with theme, this one is, and I'm a history, uh, social studies teacher, so this one as far as the card uh, information goes and as far as the um the the legitimacy of the events and and the progression of the history line this i love this game don't it's, i i don't think you're getting uh, is it coming across that i really yeah. enjoy this game <laughs> it oh, is yeah. a really good game one yeah. thing i really like about it is that cuz i've there seems to be a lot of conversations these days about storytelling games right and some people seem to think that means you read out of a big book and hope, and they write the story for you. Mm -hmm. Other people say, well, no, the, the players in the game should be the one creating the story. And this is kind of like a nice blend of those two because it's taking actual historical events and things like that, but you as the players are putting together how they work into like this alternate history um, uh, storytelling basically. Yeah, and all the small variables add to uh, that narrative, like the the weapons and the poison, and and oh man, he's going to you know this event and these other you know notables in his uh, from his ally source are going with him, which means that everybody's morale drops because nobody wants to do anything because there's too many. 
all of these things mesh so well together in this, in this um, puzzle. I highly recommend uh, people um, give this give this game a try, or at least go go watch a couple of playthroughs because you you'll either know this is my type of game or this is not my type of game. This episode of Cardboard Conjecture is proudly sponsored by Dragon's Den Games, located in the Louis VIII Mall on H Street in Saskatoon. Swing by Dragon's Den Games and let Darren, Al, and the awesome staff help you out in search for great board games, role-playing games, miniature systems, and all of the related accessories. Be a part of their gaming communities that have scheduled events in their great gaming area. Dragon's Den Games, Louis VIII Mall on 8th Street in Saskatoon. And we are back, Cardboard Conjecture. We are into the uh, topics of interest. And uh, the topic that interested us was uh, the content creators with influence. And not necessarily influence of everybody, but just mostly influence us because uh, we we tend to want to buy some games. So we want to do our research. So uh, we got it into two categories, podcasts and uh, the YouTube channels. Um, we're going to start with podcasts. And uh, Ryan, why don't you uh, why don't you hit us with a couple uh, couple of the podcasts you like to follow? Sure. So I guess when we when we started when we came up with this topic of interest and everything, we kind of started off. Uh, Norm and I were just kind of bouncing ideas back and forth, and really we kind of we got into a a conversation about um, the content creators that that when we say influence us, like I I, I respect their opinion, like I can relate to their opinions. And then that kind of like formulates like, who am I as a gamer? Why do I pay attention to these people and not pay attention to others? Who share so similar interests. One that comes off yeah. to, yeah. So one, so one that I, I'll, I'll bring up right off the top because it's on all three of our lists that we all <laughs> three seem to listen to the, the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast. Now we probably all listen to the Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast for different reasons. I'm pretty sure one of those reasons is not because it's a three and a half hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's on my, that's on my cons list. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, but, the, but they do do good work. They do good job of like the timestamps. Like, ah, if it's of a review that I really don't really care about, it's a game that I probably don't really get. I, I can at least skip through. And sometimes I skip through the news cause well, I can get, I can see all the news on BGG and stuff like that, but I kind of like their topics of interest and what they've been playing type of things. Mm -hmm. One, the person that I really relate to, <laughs> and I hope, I hope they are actually listening cause they poo poo on them like all the time, but I'm a Chris, I'm a Chris fan. A daddy. And, <laughs> But I, I'm a Chris fan because his taste in games of like the 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 heavier meteor euros mm -hmm. is, is is kind of, is kind of my jab, and those are the ones that always seem to uh, pique his interest. So like I know he's a uh, he's like he's, he's a mind clash fan, and and so and yeah. as am I. Like some of his favorite games are some of my favorite games. So I'm always paying attention to what Chris is saying because I, I can relate, but not, not that I'm poo pooing on all those other guys or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> like they, they're all, they're all like, 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 like Steve's random jokes are <laughs> sometimes just too random. And I'm like, Oh, okay. He was forcing that one. But um, yeah, Chris is one. And with the latest edition of Dawn, Mm -hmm. on the show i like i i can relate it to don's taste like he he he's a he's a junkie like me well you know he's a math <laughs> guy as well right yeah. yeah yeah so it's like and and plus he, he's from what he's from alabama and saskatchewan is pretty much the alabama of canada so <laughs> if you, if you yeah, listen there, closely uh... you can hear the banjo music in the background <laughs> yeah i like the secret, secret cabal a lot um but yeah some of their tastes just don't align with mine <laughs> Like some of the guys are really obsessed with fantasy and sci-fi. Like almost every game they're like, well, this would be really good if it was a fantasy theme. And they just want every game to be a fantasy theme. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I just, I know that going in. So it's fine. I'm just like, okay, well, um, they'll just assume that there should be monsters in this game and that game. And Viticulture would be better if it was in a fantasy setting. And or in space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I agree, Chris uh, focuses more on the Euros. I would say Tony's got a pretty level head about him, and I usually appreciate 
uh, the stuff that he brings up to. But uh, what I really like about the secret cabal is that these are like friends and they've been friends for years and you get that, right? You get that camaraderie that they have. And that's, that's what makes that show so compelling. That's why I really like the secret cabal. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. That's the, uh, in my notes, when I, when I put the, the cabal, I put, uh, they have a very familiar and comfortable buffoonery. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that, for, at least for me, you can, I can trust that the conversations will range from kindergarten humor, as, as, uh, as you said with Steve, uh, to a Zen enlightenment. And somewhere in that chaos, you get great ideas, opinions, values, um, uh, uh, just you know, a, a nice range, like you said, that you would have with a group of friends sitting down and, uh, you know, busting each other's chops kind of thing. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that one, Ryan. Absolutely. Big check. Yeah. And, and, and they, they, they were a cast that you introduced me to when, um, like I, I really never listened to podcasts. You just kind of got me into like the podcast. Um, the zone media. and everything yeah, like that yeah. the media so um that was one of the first ones that, that i that i tuned into um another one that you turned me into and kind of like the same idea of that 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 family and friends atmosphere and vibe is the blue peg pink peg podcast <laughs> um man they're they're so wonderful to listen to it's it, it's it's fantastic it's like fantastic it's 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 quality they they provide quality reviews, absolutely. Well. Like they're, they're, they they are just picking things that they have been playing and what they enjoy playing, and yeah, they they and they give you their honest opinions, and it's just like the dynamic of Rob and Christina, like the husband wife combo, with mm-hmm. the pig the pink pig, and then they they got their friends like Jeremy and um, Pat Patrick was on the show too. I miss Patrick, <laughs> and so it, it was. What, what what they bring is that yeah because they always talk about like end relationships in their podcast too which is always really really kind of cool yeah yeah I, I really enjoy and plus i i'm a i'm a rob fan like he what he what he tends to like is another thing that i always tend to to like as well like when they when they line up oh you both froth on the feld and you froth on the gloom haven i mean everybody does but wow it's like there's a there's an exceptional level of frothage going yeah with the, with that one um yeah no i i'm i'm they're on my list uh i'm complete well i'm the, you know i'm completely in agreement with everything you said there uh um they to me it's their reliability like they're not they're not wishy-washy in regards to um uh, you know, the crow, you know, liking something because it's got good chrome and good paint. They, they actually, no, they're consistent. Yeah. Yeah. They get so down consistent. to, to, um, uh, explaining it, at least to me, why this is a, why they feel this is a good game or bad game. And then it's up to me to interpret that. But yeah, I'm with you. I, I very much like, uh, like Rob's, uh, um, um, flavor, I guess. And his suggestions. Um, yeah. Ian, are you a are you a peghead? I don't know them. No, I'm, I don't know that one very much. Okay, well, um, I'm going to pick up two uh, for my podcasts here. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, so we did Blue Peg 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 Cabal. I'm going to do Drive Through Games. Joel Eddy, um, he's got the a YouTube channel, and he sometimes he'll just take the audio file and peel it off and uh, turn it into a podcast, which is just fine for me because the stuff that I like listening to from him are his reviews uh, and his, uh, you know, uh, when he wants to just go off and start talking about a certain title. Um, I like him because he's, he's got some concise opinions. Uh, he explains himself. Like, I mean, we're all three of us school teachers, so it's sort of like, you know, uh, um, Give me a give me a quote or give me you know sh- the math to show me your work right uh, from the math teacher side. Um, that's what I love about him as a reviewer that he sh- he explains his logic and he'll break it down for you. And uh, w- also with him, he the, just the energy he has. Right, like right now he's into a, a lot of the uh, the mini stuff. I'm not so much into it, but I'll pay attention to it because. 
of his enthusiasm for what he's doing. So yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of drive through games. What I would not if, would it. you say there's a specific type of game he focuses in on? Like who would you recommend this his podcast to? He you know what? He is a good generalist. I'll cat I'll categorize because there's I've got a few specialists in my in my I'll I'll go to the a specialist uh after this one, but he's a good generalist. He'll go he'll talk about exploding kittens uh all the way to you know um uh, uh warhammer 40k stuff and all this you know and all the uh umbrella games you know age of sigmar and all that other stuff so he's got a wide breadth um yeah i can see that here i just kind of got it pulled up here there's yeah you said there's a warhammer 40k ninth edition review here then there's an arkham horror review then there's a horrified and then, and then tiny towns right it's like fast sloths and yeah so um, he approaches it from a very, and I think because of his background, I think he's in, in, in computers or in software or something where that's a very formatted, you know, uh, um, put it through the system kind of uh, mentality or, or uh, uh, procedural, as far as intellect goes, a procedural approach to things. So, And like it here on his website here, he's got his videos um, all categorized. Like here's his, quote unquote Ameritrash game reviews. Here are his Euro strategy game reviews. Here are his family game reviews. So yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right here. That there there is a quite a breadth of, and he's, of, of different and, things. And he's short and sweet. Like there's some that boom, 25 minutes. You've pretty much got a good understanding for you to base your next consumer purchase, right? So He's he's good and he's awful at the same time because he's awful at the fact that I've spent lots of money because of him. <laughs> well, you you see how to get that under control. <laughs> <laughs> Says me. Yeah. Well, so I'm gonna jump to my next one, which is um, I remember I told you drive throughs a generalist. Well, here's a specific um, segment, and it's heavy cardboard. Um, Oh, I love these guys. Yeah. Well, and both YouTube and so, you know what? I'll talk about the podcast stuff. If uh, you, Ryan, you want to talk about his YouTube stuff, <coughs> pardon me, but um, heavy cardboard uh, podcast specifically when they do the reviews, uh, I, it's a guarantee uh, from as a analytical approach to the learning of the game, understanding a game. Um, he's surgical in dissecting the experience of the game and, and, uh, um, some tactical choices, uh, tactical opinions, uh, game design opinions. This is the crunchy side of my podcast listening. This is where, you know, I'm going to uh, go into figuring out how to play the great Zimbabwe, right? Uh, nobody else. I'm not going to say nobody else. Um, not too many podcasts are as operating at the same level that I, that I want to listen to as heavy cardboard when it comes to heavy games. I'm not an 18xx guy, but I will listen to uh, heavy cardboard talk about it because the, of their intelligent approach to um, that segment of the board gaming hobby. So, yeah. Yeah, they are definitely the heavier games. So if you're into that, check them out. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Cause um, I think I've gotten a lot of my Vital Lacerda <laughs> information from them. I gotten yeah. Yeah, the, the, the splatter games, um, gotten my information from them. Even some of the, the, the heavier Spielworks games from like, I, that's where I, it was from heavy cardboard that I, um, developed my love and appreciation for Arkwright. So yeah, they, they've been doing, um, if you like the heavy, if, if some, some, somebody else that I'll just briefly mention here, cause I've already went over my two, um, but, uh, on the Dukes of Dice podcast, um, there is, uh, one of the hosts, his name is Sean, Sean Ramirez, and he does, he really likes heavier. Um, and he always tends to dra- go to that word, the heavier euros. And, uh, so that's another podcast that I usually listen for his content. Yeah. I've, yeah. Cause, cause he's I think a, they're my, my phase two of podcasts. If I've consumed all of that, I'll drop into um, uh, some Dukes. Absolutely. Yeah. The Dukes of the day. So Sean Ramirez does a lot of heavier games. That's who I, 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 I pay attention to what he's liking because 
man, like when he came up with his first top 10 list, it was eerily similar to what my top 10 list was at like, at like that time Mm -hmm. when I was listening to him. So yeah. Yeah. And Alex is a good balance too for, for the, uh, for this. Oh, for, the, yeah. For the, like the family weight. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and the, the lighter the stuff. Cra- too, yeah. And, yeah. The kooky and the kooky crazy personality. Yeah. Ian, I want to hear some podcasts, uh, um, uh, suggestions from you because I know you've got stuff up your sleeve that I probably haven't heard. Well, though you'll hear the first one because everybody <laughs> has heard of it. When I started, uh, teaching about 10 years ago I had a long commute and I still have a long commute but then I I decided I hated the radio I needed something else and so that's where I first got into podcasts so the very first podcast of any topic that I've heard is the Dice Tower Mm -hmm. because they were going back then and most of these other podcasts we talked about didn't exist at this point in time Um, and I still really respect the Dice Tower and Absolutely. I think they've just got a they've got a formula down that works, but they're not afraid to switch things up at the same time, and they tend to just kind of throw their quick initial views of games, and I find that really helpful. Well, like they don't have review segments like Secret Cabal does, yeah. or, or some of these other podcasts do necessarily, like a full in depth review. They just touch on what are some of the new games they've been playing, and then they've got the fun things like the top ten lists and stuff, and. Uh, they they take a lot of listener questions, which I actually find really entertaining and really uh, informative. <laughs> and so I know it's not a very unique pick, but I'm going with the Dice Tower because I, nope. I still think that they're one of the more interesting voices. And you I think see, that's a lot. Cool. Of, sorry, yeah. No, no, you, no. You keep going. I'll I'll interject later. I was just gonna say I think Tom Vassell tends to be a punching bag sometimes lately, <laughs> um, but I think he's actually one of the more genuine voices out there right now because he just he says what he genuinely thinks about things and i really appreciate that oh yeah no because he consumes so much board game content as, as as his daily so when he recommends or says something is good or rec does a dice style recommend it has to have stood out above all of that other junk that he has been all the white noise that, that, all that stuff that he's been filtering through because yeah. i can't imagine the stuff that 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 we don't see yeah um absolutely that that that, that come through well, no and, dice tower is one of the ones that i that i it was probably like you i that's where i started i, I listened to the dice tower podcast a lot. i still do when i kind of like caught up <laughs> i'll do yeah. a quote unquote <laughs> caught up on things and i'll just kind of go through the list and say oh hey that looked like an interesting top 10 mm-hmm. thing or so, or something along those lines but well yeah. and yeah. and tom and eric have um ha- have done so many podcasts together that they've got such a, a, a authentic chemistry that you can't help but um you know uh go along with them on their little conversation kind of thing and then it evolved with the uh, when they introduced the the, the, the the every other podcast is the is Mandy and Suzanne. Yeah, and I, I really I really like Mandy. Mandy is hilarious <laughs> and Canadian. A yeah. to boot. <laughs> yeah, that's always a plus. She has that polite yeah. cynicism, <laughs> <laughs> the apologetic oh. sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, good you're thing. right. Tom, Tom's got a good eye for for stuff. Like for example, uh, I remember when actually wait we already just talked about dominant species his review of dominant species i found really interesting because he basically said this is going to be one of this is one of the best designed games in recent years and it's going to stand the test of time and he was right it has and last about this time last year when wingspan just came out he said in like january he said this is the game of the year He's saying, I'm saying that right now. This will be the game of the year. And guess what? It won every award that you can think of. And in my personal opinion. (laughs) Even the ones it didn't qualify for, right? Yeah, (laughs) right. But yeah, and I love that they they switch things up. They add a whole bunch of new voices. Um, They add a bunch of new segments. and uh, Well, they've grown as a network, which is awesome. Absolutely. It's huge. This episode is proudly supported by the amazing team at Breakout Escape and Board Game Lounge from right here in Saskatoon. Using industry-leading technology, Breakout Escape's escape rooms are all 100% uniquely designed by the team, ensuring their patrons have maximum fun while staying safe. 
As well, they are a fully licensed board game lounge with over 400 titles to select from to ensure fun for every gamer new and experienced. Be sure to check them out at BreakoutSask.com. At Breakout Escapes and, and Game Lounge, they believe that life is more fun when you play games. Okay, I'll give you another one which has nothing to do with board game reviews. So if you're looking for that, go elsewhere. But if you like to laugh, <laughs> check out This Game is Broken. Because oh, what it yeah. is, is it is a mesh of board games and whose line is it anyway? If you remember that old, uh, oh, that's, old that's, show. That, 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 that's a really good, that's yeah. actually a really good uh, comparison. Yeah. And they, they are hilarious. I, those hosts are, are really funny. So if you, if you just like to laugh, but you like, you want it to be centered around something about board games, check that out. What, uh, what's their average length of uh, episode? Uh, I would say it's about an hour or just under maybe cool. 45 minutes. Cool. All right, Ryan. So you slipped in uh, the Dukes of Dice in there. What do you got for another one? Um, let's see here. Uh, Dukes of Dice. I talk, um, well, some of the other ones that I, I pay attention to, like ones that I always go to the top of my list, I'm going to go give a love to our cardboard cohorts out there. Like um, when Dave, Dave Stevenson here of Board on the Air releases yeah. his like, releases his episodes. I always tend to give him a, a, few, a, few, a few likes. So Board on the Air. Um, they, they, they do a uh, a weekly show uh, based in Saskatoon here on uh, CFCR. So it's a radio show and they, they, they put it out every like, well, I think, what does he do? Thursdays? I think it's every Thursday night on CFCR. And then every now and then he, once he gets a, an, a backlog of these episodes, he'll release them onto like the, the, the podcast hosting, hosting places. So bored on the air and it's just him and his daughter, which gives a really nice uh, flavor to like their conversation. So it's a dad and daughter reviewing they give you the news. They kind of tell, and they always pick a topic. They never do like a hardcore like board mm -hmm. game review, but they pick some interesting topics. Like, oh, they'll talk about worker placement games and like what are they playing? What have they been playing? What are some of their favorites and stuff like that? So, board on the awesome. air is really really cool. And in our sister city, Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, we have of dice and men. Yeah, who have started? Who did their podcast before we started our podcast? Um. Yeah, th and they those, started community radio too. Yeah, yeah, they right? started in community yeah. radio, and then they stopped doing the community radio and started just actually just recording through uh, at, at their at their homes, and they they always have a great. Uh, they 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 don't go usually over an hour. It's always about yeah. an hour length podcast, and um, they'll always talk about the games that they've been playing, and they always have a, always an interesting topic that usually is not, hasn't is not being like talked about at the time. Of, uh, of other board game podcasts or board game media they always try to find something really unique to mm -hmm. talk about which is uh, i i appreciate because like you want you want some fresh content you don't always want to hear the same old top tens or the same old you want to always hear about the same old games on every podcast like oh like everybody's going to be talking about gloomhaven jaws of the lion on every podcast <laughs> nowadays because it's the, the next up music. ryan will be talking about gloomhaven <laughs> jaws of the lion <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, gotta, I, love, gotta give, I love of dyson man i absolutely second that recommendation yeah absolutely i'll i'll turd that one and then and then the last canadian one that i really like to do is um uh aaron da, uh, out out um out west on the boards alive podcast the Kelowna crew the cl part of the Kelowna crew there um Oh, that, that was another one of the very first ones that I discovered. Mm -hmm. And back back with like when they were like in their raw stages, like they had like absolutely no idea what they were doing. Well, what, much like much like what we do. My favorite part is listening to them and then and then, and then sh shockingly going, "You can say that on a podcast." <laughs> oh, absolutely. And they're like, but what really drew me is like when they started when they do their reviews, um, they always have like this kind of like scripted narration story based in the the, the review oh, games yeah, world yeah. and they always kind of talk about it and they kind of inter all the, the, and they're so funny and the voices that they can create and i i that's where i really liked where they came up with like, they're making board games come alive is when they ever did do the i always went straight to the story that they that they made about the board game it's like if kids in the hall did a board game review show <laughs> uh, so yeah boards alive and they're they're part of like the, I think the the punchboard media uh, circle of of uh, 
content. That network, yeah, absolutely. Cool. So oh. I, I, I fulfilled our Canadian contract <laughs> so, <laughs> of recommendations. Yeah, CRTC will be happy for. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to mention because he hasn't been mentioned, and and this individual was one of the first ones that drew me in um, through YouTube. And then when he started podcasting, uh, this would be um, a good segue into the YouTube stuff too. Yeah. yeah. And then, so when he started podcasting, I was in there and it's Rado. Um, but, uh, but I, I listened to a specific uh, um, uh, podcast that he sends out. He sends out a lot of content, but I listened to now um, uh, Rado rounds up. And that's when he talks about his top games of the month that he's played. So he'd be like Rado rounds up the, the month of May or right. And uh, so um, he gives you his top 20-ish games kind of thing of the month, um, which, as you guys were mentioning with Tom Vassell, he consumes so many games that he, for me, he's one of these litmus test kind of guys that if it gets through his filters and, you know, it's like he's going to, he's doing all the hard work for research for me, right? Because he's, to me, one of these guys that aligns with my tastes and aligns somewhat with my, you know, with what I like in euros and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he basically puts games on my radar um, a lot of the time, much like uh, shut up and sit down does. But uh, yeah, Rado, I'm uh, as far as podcasts go, I'll let somebody else talk about the YouTube stuff. But as far as podcasts goes, the Rado rounds up is uh, one of my favorite ones that he puts out. So Rado is one of the ones, again, is one of the first ones that I discovered too, because I like his opinion because he solely consumes the games on two player experiences. And that's what my gaming situation is uh, over half the time is, is gaming with my wife. So we consume and do lots of two player. So when he, when he reviews games and he plays through games, he does it through like a two player lens most of the time. Now, yeah. not all the time, but most of the time. And so when he gives his opinions about something, it's coming from a lens of like, it's a two player, almost like a, it's a solely like a two player kind of like review. And he says that of out the of game. the gates too, that everything yeah. is, was, is from that perspective that it's him and his wife and that's it. He doesn't care about anything else, which is fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love his and spontaneity. As long as you know that too. Yeah. And, and, and he doesn't like, and they don't like confrontation yeah. in, in, in their game. So like, you know, that when he recommends things and he, or if he poo poos on things, it's because maybe it had confrontation. Like he's very honest in that. Like he does not like that in games. And his credibility level um, for me is, is rings uh, because he comes from the um, uh, video game industry and, mm -hmm. and, and he, like he was one of the, he's the, was the lead designer on Siphon Filter, which was, you know, I'm one not a big gamer. No, one of my favorite video games of all time. Yeah, like, Life and it was it was one of these tipping points for uh, for a lot of the video game industry uh, uh, games. So this is an individual who isn't just you know you know blowing it out the wazoo. He's coming from a, cr a credible point of view. So and I'm glad yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift into his YouTube stuff. Well, let's transition into the YouTube content, Brian. Wow, there's an echo in here for a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, but it, with his YouTube, like his latest stuff has been really good because he, he's upgraded his camera mm -hmm. and he's upgraded and he's upgraded his software that he's been using. No longer are we have the days of the shaky hand holding <laughs> over top of the board and as, he's expl as he's explaining what he's going and he's got the phone over here and it's over there and I'm going to getting motion sickness some of the time when he's, when he's <laughs> Blair Witch Board games. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he's upgraded his stuff. Like he gives you such a decent exposure on how the games play, the and that's what I can see when 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 yeah. I when I do these YouTube. When we're gonna start mentioning some of this YouTube stuff, um, that's why I go to YouTube for board games. Is usually is I'm doing my research. I'm trying to get a feel for what the board game looks like and how the game plays. That uh, that's all the content I'm consuming off of YouTube is what does it look for, like. And how does it play? So all the things that I have on here are all um, how does the game play people? And these are the ones that I always pay attention to when, when I'm, say, I, I type in pendulum. When yeah. I'm looking for pendulum um, walkthroughs, um, I look to see if some of these names are doing 
yeah. that, 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 that particular game. So Rado is always one that I always kind of take a look at. Cool. Um, the next one that I always, I always, always look for Mr. Canada board game himself, Rodney Smith, watch it played. And I'm visualizing him flipping a box right now. So something about that. That's been quality production right right from the get go he doesn't provide any reviews like he doesn't honest he doesn't provide any reviews it is literally he teaches you how to play a game mm-hmm. which is finally i i love it because i i love the fact that sometimes i don't have to read a instruction manual i can just put it on there in the background and he's going to tell me how that plays so and see, for me i'm not interested in that if if someone's not doing a review i'm not interested like, I don't want to see how the game is played. Um, I just want to see what someone's opinion of the game is. I want to get a general sense. Is this for like a pre-purchase kind of opinion? or is Yeah. This, yeah. Okay. But me, I personally, I like the experience of learning how the game plays on my own, right? Like going yeah. through the rules and doing a run through. Um, and so while I can see how many, how people are loving this rules explaining online especially with watch it played because i hear about him all the time if they're not adding their opinion i'm actually not that interested but that's just me that's just my perspective well that that fan yeah absolutely because i was in that boat too but then i started purchasing so many freaking games that i wasn't reading <laughs> all of the manuals yeah <laughs> so i got my brief little synopsis here and there but i can i just i can understand that so like there are ones that do provide their um reviews afterwards one that i just actually just come to know from the pendulum side is the uh, uh the before you play channel so they're there called before you play and they literally they, they'll play through the game usually as a two player and then after they're done playing they will talk about the experience and they will review the game afterwards as part of the same video cool so they show like they actually film them playing at first is that what you're saying yeah yeah they film okay. themselves playing the game first and if you don't want to watch the playthrough, they'll timestamp it. And then you can just skip right down right to the very end when they start talking about it. And usually their review is about the experience, the, the same, almost the same experience that they were just playing through. Right. That's okay. Cool. That's cool. Well, and Rado gonna... does that too. He timestamps things really clearly. So if you're like me and you want to skip to his opinions, he's actually got a really easy click link there. You yeah, can do that. His final thoughts. And if you are like Ryan and you want to see everything played out, <laughs> that option too. If you have the time, if you have the time to watch everything, because some, so their playthroughs, like some of those playthroughs could be hour, hour and a half. It was a longer game, two hours. You're going to watch somebody play a game for two hours. Well, that's a perfect segue to uh, heavy cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and what was mentioned before, like with the podcast and then, and then um, uh, um, Ryan mentioned Lacerda and all of these other heavy that is basically if i i'm going to go to heavy cardboard to watch all my heavy games played through and you know made sure that i don't mess on the rules or if i read the rule book and it's the something feels fuzzy or i just don't I, nothing's clicking i'll go to heavy cardboard see if he's doing a playthrough i'll put it on chipmunk speed and i'll and i'll just watch what's going on um i just like watch it played I think heavy cardboard fills that slot of uh, instructional um, board game video content for the heavier gamers. So, um, yeah. This episode is proudly supported by Mr. Dice Guy online board game retailer located right here in Saskatoon. Mr. Dice Guy is always stocking the hot new titles as well as restocking all time favorites. They even have a ding and dent section for previously played titles. They offer free shipping across Canada on all orders over $200 or free local pickup if you're in the Saskatoon area. Check them out at MrDiceGuy.com. Saskatoon's Mr. Nice Guy is Mr. Dice Guy. Just bringing it back, as Norm's saying that with heavy cardboard, of course, there are the heavy games. Does Rodney have a specific uh, milieu or is he kind of a generalist? Does he do any games? Does he just so, do like so, Rod, so Rodney? So Rodney seems to be like of a, of a generalist. 
Um, now he's kind of like under contract with uh, Board Game Geek, so I think he kind of gets filtered through things that come across, like maybe what are what's kind of like the new hotness mm-hmm. gotcha. type thing. So for right now, for but for 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 a while there though, he was still kind of covering a little bit. He never really got into like really super heavy. He was light to medium, reviews. I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He would never get into like the heavy heavier stuff. Like no. even if you kind of look back, there was not. Um, I still like the running joke that he has not done a watch it played for Star Wars Rebellion. <laughs> yeah. And that this past April Fools, he said that he was going to do a Star Wars Rebellion and, review yeah. uh, or, or watch it played. And he literally just opened up the rule book and he read the rule book verbatim. Yeah. It was like fireside <laughs> chat. It was hilarious. But do you know what? <laughs> I actually watched that and I actually caught things that. I may have overlooked while reading the rule book. <laughs> For those people who, who can't see what Ian just did, he put his slapped his face into F-P. his hands. He, he face palmed. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, rolled his eyes so much that you could have WD four D from here. So um I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna put on uh a suggestion here. Shut up and sit down. Um these are early on one of my favorite uh video. Uh, review channels that I watched um, simply now again for twofold one entertaining man I I have a giggle um, at just the way that they put their their reviews together now um, as far as their their spectrum of games goes they're the first ones to say that they're going to show you games that that they have fun and they're going to show you games that bring joy. Um, they're not going to sh- uh, they're not going to do the heavy cardboard thing. They're not going to do, you know, the 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 games that are going to abstractly challenge you to the point where you're going to you know turn into an MBA student and and uh, be an accountant kind of thing. Um, their focus is just and they say it fun and joy. That's pretty much it. Um, so if you take it as that. And uh, it's it's informative, it's fun. Um, I've I've got a note here where I say uh, it's um, a cross between uh, Kids in the Hall and Monty Python in regards to their at least for me their sense of humor and their style of approaching uh, communicating this content and this game to you. So yeah, I'm a big shut up and sit down fan. Oh, that'll make only one of us. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you're bigger. I- I I don't know. I, I can appreciate what they've done for the for the for the hobby and the and the content that they provide. I just I could not get it into them at was it, all. Was it the accent? Did and I and I, I love and I love Monty Python. <laughs> no, I, I love Monty Python. I love kids in hall. I love that kind of stuff growing up in here. But I just don't see it. Like I get I get so I when I watch the, some of them, I kind of get annoyed a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, at least at least somebody here can appreciate what 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 they are what they're doing. But uh, nope, I'll I'll I will skip by most of the time. And to yeah, I, I used to listen to them, but I I kind of stopped. But they used to have a big influence on kind of the games I'd look at. But I feel like they're not a voice for me anymore. Well, you might. I mean, I've I can see myself growing out of them because my interests are growing differently. So, but I totally appreciate their, their entertainment value. Um, I'm going to segue to a thematic uh, connection. Um, One that I picked up this year, three minute reviews uh, on YouTube. Mm. And uh, I'm going to try and say it faster than they can do their reviews. Um, It's, it's my quick fix video. Uh, I found so many cool titles because of uh, just their, you know, s- speed there. Uh, it's a, it's a ADD wonderland for board gamers because you can bang through four of his uh, reviews and go, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Okay. Off to the store. <laughs> so that's my uh, plug for three minute board game reviews. Oh, no, I'm trying, I'm trying to find it right now because, and I'm not going to find it fast enough, but on Twitter, there's that lady that does the one minute reviews and she does it through TikTok, and she publishes it to Twitter. And she literally, she talks about a game 
as fast as she can for one minute. Like it, it stops ex exactly one minute. And what she can cram into a minute is impressive about some of these, about some of these games. And she doesn't even pick like just small, like light games too. Like she'll pick out, like, I think I watched one about Maracaibo and like Maracaibo has got a complex game. It's got a lot going on. She explains the game in one minute. It's impressive. And I'm just, <laughs> oh, idea. now I, now I, now I can't find, now I'm under the pressure and I can't find it. If I one one minute board game review or something like here, <laughs> board, I'm not going to, I'm not going to find it. Before. I'll cut that because <laughs> it's, <laughs> It basically went off the branch. <laughs> uh, Ian, what do yeah. you got for a YouTube channel? All right. Well, you guys, I've talked before about how I have a reputation for getting rules wrong here and there. <laughs> right. So <laughs> the good thing is, is that I found a website that fixes that. So I found a, a website that actually explains rules to games really well. And actually what I, what I've been using it for is going back to old favorites and learning how they're really played all the rules properly. Uh, this is a YouTuber channel called Dragon's Tomb. And so what I would suggest is uh, let's take a game like Settlers of Catan, something that everybody knows. Well, you might have got a lot of rules wrong. So I would suggest go look at his Settlers of Catan review. And you'll find a lot of different rules there that you probably weren't aware of for Settlers of Catan. I highly recommend everyone to do that. When I saw that video, I was crying, <laughs> literally crying <laughs> with laughter. Yeah. yeah that I was forgot, such a forgot about discovery. Oh, I'm glad you brought that one up. I forgot about that one for a while now. Yeah, I'm going to go back and watch some Sheer of those. entertainment. Absolutely. Please. The absolute, I think, well, Settlers of Catan is still a classic for me, but you got to check out his Django review. I just trust me on this. I, I, I Watch his Django yeah. review. Yeah, don't talk, don't talk about it anymore. They have to discover that one on their own. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon's Tomb, Jenga. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, I'll grab one more because more for the, the people that like their, 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 their family games and their family weight games is that I really enjoy... Um, Dan King, the Game Boy Geek. Yeah, and, me and too. What he, and what he does. Um, he does like a variety of different things from uh, just kind of explain, oh, giving a quick overview of what a game, what, how a game plays. He may do some playthroughs, but really he, he really shines on his, on his reviews of games. And now he focuses more on the lighter to medium, but probably more the family weight lighter, the lighter games. And I like his, like, he's got a segment of his two minute Allegros. Yeah. Where he will just talk about the game for like what he really enjoys about it. Like when you get an Allegro, like means something he really, he approves of this game. Like he, mm -hmm. it's one of his favorite games. And so he'll, he'll give you a two minute overview. Or if you want the, the more deeper discussion, he'll always have a deeper discussion uh, video about, about, about the game. But the Game Boy Geek, um, he does some really, really, really cool things that he, he's one that it pop that I'll pay attention to if it pops up for like a preview. Yeah. He's been doing a lot more preview stuff of like games that are coming out. Like maybe he got his hands on like an early release copy of something. And so a lot of those types of things. Another one that kind of fits in that vein is like the man versus meeple um, show mm -hmm. is that they do, they do, a, they've been doing a lot more preview um, gaming, they, they kind of like contract themselves out. People, companies will hire them to do a preview of their games. And I'll, I'll listen to it. They, they provide really cool in-depth things. They have good they production too, yeah. Well, the interesting thing is like years ago, like 10 years ago, when I was really getting into this, um, Jeremy Salinas, who does The Man vs. Meeple now, he actually made preview videos um, and he was just kind of starting off and they were awesome. Like he got, that guy got me to buy so many games. <laughs> like he do a, he do an overview of merchants and marauders, for example. And he'd have like the, as he's, he's going through it and he's almost doing like a close up view of everything as he's explaining how it works. All you see is the components. Not, it's not like him talking with the wall of games behind him. It's nothing like that. It was high production. He's got the Pirates of the Caribbean theme booing in the background. And they were 
great videos and they really got me hyped about a lot of games. And so, and yeah, now he's got that big man versus meeple show. So I um, uh, can't finish this without mentioning the two major influences um, were uh, tabletop Will Whedon and uh, game night with the B uh, board game geek uh, crew. Those two channels, uh, the Will Wheaton um, tabletop, that one basically, I bought, <laughs> I think that was one of the first ones that really got me fired up for this hobby because I got to see um, people having fun with this, with these games and, and the same thing with game night. Um, it just, it's like, let me see how these games are played. Um, but uh, yeah, those two. Yeah. Yeah. Will I Wheaton. remember the tape because everything, everybody was always talking about a game. If it got on to tabletop, it had the tabletop effect. It was sold out everywhere. The Will Wheaton effect, yeah. It, it had the tabletop effect. Like, I remember um, that's the one I watched tabletop when I purchased Takenoko. Mm -hmm. And I could not find Takenoko for the life of me for a while here in Saskatoon because people bought it. Yeah, same with Five Tribes for me. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's unfortunate that show doesn't really gonna go anymore. They got a lot of heat. He tried tried to make it more Hollywood, yeah, and everything like that. And uh, yeah, it just didn't pan. But yeah, that was, those are two good picks. I really I really enjoyed those two as well. Cool. Um, one for me. I'm just gonna this is my last one that I'm gonna mention. Um, then I'll give some of my honorable mentions that we never got to talk about. But one for me that I've been really enjoying is uh, Team Covenant. This one's more like it's it's kind of like the niche inside of a niche hobby, as in Team Covenant. They only cover um, these collectible and living card games, and so they do lots of discussion and playthroughs of like Arkham Horror, the card game. Marvel Champions is something they've been doing a lot of lately, and they do a lot of these other card-based um, games that that are that are out there. And I really like it because I, I pay attention to, I watch them for their strategies because they'll go and they'll like, they'll even have a video where it's just them deck building. Like they'll construct their decks and why are they constructing their deck this way? What should you be paying attention to when you make your decks and stuff like that? So they kind of have like, I don't know, quote unquote, like remember when we were um, kids for video games, you got the strategy guides yeah. for, for your video games. Yeah. Um, the, these guys are kind of like the strategy guide to some of these card to these card based games, and they they pump out content cool. constantly, constantly. And during this pandemic too, they've been live streaming uh, for a couple hours every single day, and they 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 pick a new topic like every day, and they they just kind of they, they live stream it. Right on. And so yeah, they have they have lots of content. If you're really into like those living card games and any any type of those competitive card games. So any ones that we didn't mention, like I never got to mention here, uh, gaming rules, really nice. Uh, the, uh, how, yeah. how, to, how to explain rules to the games. Um, another one that's kind of like the, the same vein as the watch it played um, rules teach is the one that I discovered called game in a nutshell. And I don't know if you guys have heard of this, yep. but, uh, but, I, I kind of call him. He, he's he's the he's the perfect yin to the yang for Watch It Play because he covers all the games that like Watch It Play doesn't cover. Like he'll cover heavier games. Like this is where I learned how to play um, Barrage, and I learned how to play Maracaibo, and so he kind of teaches like a little bit of like kind of like the heavier strategy Euro games. So game in a nutshell. So that's about the time we'll wrap the episode up. I am your host Norm. I'm Ryan. Ian. And we'll catch you later. We are Bridge City Board Gamers, and you can find us on Twitter at BC Board Gamers, on Facebook, Bridge City Board Gamer Community. And on YouTube at Bridge City Board Gamers. You can also find us on BGG Guild number 3039.